whenever we are working on a robot in real world we need a computational power like raspberry pi to be on the robot that will read the sensors to get the information of the environment and send it to our system or the cloud so that computation is done mostly through raspberry pi in the diy community because it is quite powerful quad core with a lot of gvs of ram and hard disk so we have to look into different features for specific robotics development in certain cases that will be optimized and save your time when developing main parts of those components are sd card operating system power resources and sensor data integration to test our sd card we need to put it into a card reader and then plug it into our laptop Once that is done, it might not appear, but we can still check through disks. Here I have the 16 GB SD card connected, although system does not understand that. Let me write the command and put sudo before it. It is going to start copying. For you, it might ask for the password. Here what it is doing is using the dd command of Linux, where it checks the location of the SD card and the place where it has to write 1 GB of file which is written here the command that 1 MB of chunk and 1024 chunks meaning 1 GB and you are going to tell us the status how much time it is taking and what is the speed the average result is 7.1 Mbps and it took me 150 seconds but 7.1 MB is slow which means this SD card is slower and it is going to slow down our development. Let's now get to the command of reading from our SD card. Reading is mostly faster than writing and uh, the command is almost the same dd destination from which you are going to read and 1 GB and you are also going to tell the status in real time. Once this is complete, we can understand that SD card is of low class and it is going to cause problems because reading is only 16.6 MB. If we take a look into the available sources, we have original Samsung card with class 10 can speed up to 95 MB per second and 20 MB per second, which is much more greater than the results we have on our SD card. So this is what you have to first check before moving on. So I would recommend check your SD card using these commands which I will provide in the description. The robot is moving on the ground and this is our final project that we want to achieve. Now in this robot project, we don't want a display on the robot like this robot. Neither do we want to have a display connected to our Raspberry Pi. The only thing we need to do for this robot is programming. And for that, we just need to plug in the Raspberry Pi or turn it on somehow and then program on our laptop. These are the decisions we are doing for selecting an operating system. Now, there are two versions of Ubuntu, Ubuntu Desktop and Ubuntu Server. Ubuntu Desktop is the one which creates a GUI and there is an interface for it. Other side, Ubuntu Server, there is only a shell terminal or we can connect to our Raspberry Pi through an IP address and we are selecting Ubuntu server for this application. Ubuntu server was decided for our robot application. Now to install that OS we need to install a software sudo apt get install rpi imager and I already have installed it is a very amazing software that selects the SD card and automatically install your selected operating system. In my case, the 16 GB SD card is selected. Let's select an operating system. We can see Raspberry Pi OS 32, 64, Legacy, a lot of options are there. But as we want to install Ubuntu because of the ROS to make things easier, we are going to go in other general purpose and select Ubuntu. In Ubuntu, we have Ubuntu desktop 23, 23.10, 64, 32. Then Ubuntu 22, selecting between Ubuntu 23 and 22 is another decision that one has to make. And this is the distinction here as well, Ubuntu server and Ubuntu desktop. Let's open up wiki of ROS2. Here the LTS meaning long term support, which are going to be ending at Humble is going to end at 2027 and Iron is going to end in the next year. So we are going to go with Humble Haskell. If I select Humble Hox build supported platforms and here I have Ubuntu 22 
0.04 and this is important for selecting the operating system we will be working on and we are going to be selecting ubuntu server 22.04 64-bit this one and the difference between why selecting server you can see its size is 1 gb the desktop size is almost double the size of the server so we will here select ubuntu server 64-bit now before just writing it using rpi image we are going to go in select enable ssh because we would be accessing a raspberry pi over the network not the ip we are going to select here our username and password that we want to use for getting into it and we also are going to configure the wireless network the wireless network is automatically taken from your connected device and this is also very important to which internet connection your raspberry pi is going to be connected from which both of the laptop from which you want to connect or any other device should be connected to the same ssid access point in my case is this password should be correct you have to show the password and make changes if it is incorrect once these settings are done and then it starts writing on your sd card raspberry pi motors and sensors are on our robot the raspberry pi is powered separately using a power bank which should supply 5 volt and 3 amperes total of 18 watt power is required for raspberry pi to operate at full potential all the time it is not consuming 18 watts but at higher computational processes motors are separately provided 12 volts through the lipo and sensors is like encoders require very small amount of 100 milliamps now the thing is that can be supplied through raspberry pi or motor driver circuit voltage required by the sensor is mostly 5 volts now the power sources are different for raspberry pi and motor but they all should have common ground which acts as a reference point and keep all the signals aligned otherwise erratic values and motor behaviors will be experienced with any network application on your phone you can check the ip address of raspberry pi let's ping the ip address that i get on my device and i can see it is pinging it meaning it is connected to the same network and i can access now let's write ssh ubuntu at the ip address and provide the password of raspberry pi press enter and you are going to get inside of raspberry pi which is ubuntu at ubuntu let's connect vs code to a raspberry pi to start writing the code or program for that we need ssh vs code plugins remote ssh by microsoft and once you have installed them you are going to press this button of remote window and connect to host then provide the username and the ip address press enter it is going to open new window it is also going to ask for the password here i am going to provide the password that i have set for raspberry pi it is going to take some time and now you can see we are inside of raspberry pi with the vs code and our terminal as well let's say we are installing foxy just to give you an understanding simply you need to copy paste all the installation process in your vs code or ssh terminal because vs code is also ssh so you can install using the, all the commands on the wiki and paste them into your system and install everything that you want last remaining thing is to back up your sd card once all of the software setup and the compilers are set you are going to back it up because sometimes in robot jerks sd card gets broken or sometimes they just die down you don't have to spend all of the time to install the required softwares again let's write the simple command and first we need to make sure you have backup let's first unmount our dev meaning that our sd card which is sd drive is unmounted then we run this command which is dd from sda you are input this and output is going to be backup image press enter provide the password and it is going to start reading the contents of your sd card and creating a backup image into your system and let me show you here we can see backup.img is now being created and it is size is changing as things are being copied next time you want an sd card with the same raspberry pi image you are going to install that image and all the softwares and configurations are going to be on the new sd card as well 
by taking all of these steps your development becomes quite easier especially the non desktop development for mobile robots as they are moving and we don't want to connect the display and see if things are working or not vs code ssh access is amazing and backing up things can help us scaling the software a lot and also i want you to share any insights that you have for developing on these kinds of robot in the comments and let me know i can add this into the next video